All right, in a previous video, we went over a lot of unit conversion practice, but if you need to, go back to that video and try to practice some of those problems to get a little bit more um, experience using uh, conversion factors and calculations. But what I wanted to start out today with is conversions using specifically Avogadro's number and atomic and molecular weights. So let's do a little bit of review. One mole is equal to six, 0 0.0221409 times 10 to the 23rd things. Really what this is, this number right here, is Avogadro's number. It has a lot more digits than we're used to seeing, but I just put them in there so you can see that it's actually an irrational number with a lot of digits on it. I know somebody was asking during one of the SI sessions, um, how many digits should you use? Ideally, you want all of your conversion factors to have the same significant figures or more than whatever it is you were measuring. You don't want it to have fewer though. So this is just Avogadro's number. Oops, and then I obviously misspelled things over here. <laughs> it's hard to type, or sorry, it's hard to write and talk at the same time. But things could be atoms or molecules. It could really be anything. So when we're talking about things here, it could be interchangeable for an atom, molecule, ion, really whatever you want. It's just a counting tool. All right, so this is one really important conversion factor. The next one is also related to this, where one mole is equal to the atomic or molecular weight in grams. So these are both very important. So I'm just gonna go ahead and box these off because we're gonna be using these throughout this video as important conversion factors. But before we do that, the question is, well, how do we find the atomic weight? So atomic just means we're referring to one atom. That is the mass with a decimal on the periodic table. And if you remember back to a previous video, I said that the mass is actually an average of all of the natural isotopes for a given element. That's why it's an average. And I said averages are often expressed with the term weight in it. All right, if we're talking about a molecule, to find the molecular weight of a molecule, you need to add the mass for all atoms within a molecule. All right, so let's go ahead and draw a flow chart. And this flow chart I know is pretty popular with some students, so I'm just gonna write this down as my master flow chart. And then after we make this flow chart, we'll go through and do a variety of practice problems. But let's say that we have the mass of an atom and we want to go to moles of an atom. Well, that's pretty easy. In fact, we can go back and forth between mass and moles, but let's go back up and look at this. So here we've got mass and here we've got moles. That means we need the atomic weight, right? So we need the mass of that element or atom on the periodic table. So I'm just gonna write this down as atomic weight. All right, so that would be our conversion factor for this specific step. But furthermore, once we have the moles of an atom, we can actually go further out and we can determine the number of atoms that we're talking about. And to do this, we need Avogadro's number. So I'll just write that above here. So this works really well for individual atoms. Let's do the same thing for molecules. I know this is gonna feel a little bit redundant, but I'll just go ahead and write molecules. And, whoops, let me do mass of molecules. We'll keep it consistent. 
So let's say we have a sample of water, right? Water being H2O would be a molecule. It's not an atom in this case, but that's okay. We can do this and then we can convert to moles of a molecule pretty easily. Again, using the weight, but this time it's not the atomic weight. It's going to be the molecular weight. Again, this is the added masses of each of the individual atoms that make up the given molecule. And then if we want to go to number of atoms, we can do the same thing, or sorry, number of molecules. You zoom out a little bit. Again, we're going to need to use Avogadro's number. All right. So as you can see, these two are really um, similar to one another. We need to know the weights and we need to know Avogadro's number if we want to get from one side to the other. However, there's actually another trick. We can interconvert these two pathways. So let's say we have H2O, right? So H2O is a molecule. But let's say my question is, all right, I've got H2O as my molecule, but how many moles of hydrogen, let me write this out, of H are in one mole of H2O? Well, in this case, you can see that the subscript here indicates that there's two moles of hydrogen for every one mole of H2O. So what I'm gonna do here is make a new conversion, and this is just going to be my subscripts, meaning that two in this case could be used, meaning the ratio. So for every one mole of water, we'd get two moles of hydrogen atoms out, or you could do the same thing at the last step because really you could use this on either of these two last conversions over here. So if you wanted to do the same thing over here, you could do subscripts. Oop, I can't spell today, apparently. And again, this is the same ratio. Unfortunately, you cannot do the same here. That is not allowed. You can't assume the mass uh, of a molecule is related to the mass of a particular atom. Instead, we got to do some workarounds. All right, so let's go ahead and do a practice problem. And I'm going to make this one a little bit more challenging. Okay, so in this practice problem, we're going to say we have a sample oops, of ethanol. Ethanol is known as drinking alcohol. It's often found in gasoline, too, up to about 10%. So this is C2H6O, and it has a mass of 21.7 grams. Okay, so that's the sample mass that we're starting with. And now the question is, what mass is made up of carbon? within this sample. So basically we're just saying we've got this parent mass, but not all of it is made up of carbon. We've got some hydrogen in there and oxygen in there, but what mass within that parent sample is composed of carbon? Okay, so let's start out and we're gonna just pencil out a plan before we deal with the mass. Okay, so here's what we know. We've got a mass of a molecule, right? Okay, so this is going to be starting point. Right, we've got the mass of our molecule um, already given to us. Let's figure out where we're trying to go though. So we're trying to figure out what is the mass made up of carbon. So really this is going to be our ending point. We need to figure out the mass of an atom, okay? So let's figure out what steps we need to take and we'll just write them out as our plan. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. So my plan is to go from mass, let me make this bigger, mass of molecules 
two moles of molecules. Let me make this a one-way arrow because really we're not trying to go reverse. And then once we go from moles of a molecule, we're going to go to moles of atoms. And then we're going to go all the way over to mass of atom. All right, so sometimes when I'm doing these, I'm a fan of just penciling out a plan before I get knee deep in the math. Whoops, that didn't work well. Um, it's a little bit easier to do that. Let me just make this a messy square. All right, so this is my plan for that problem. Okay, so let's go ahead. We've got the mass of the molecule, which is 21.7 grams, right? And that's of C2... H6O. Sometimes I include this in there. That way we just don't forget what we're referring to when we're talking about the mass. Are we talking about mass of carbon or mass of the molecule? In this case, we can see it's mass of the molecule. All right, we need to cancel out grams. So I'm going to put grams of my molecule down below. Okay, and like I said, we need to get from our mass over to our moles. So that implies that we need to put moles on top. So I'm going to say moles of C2H6O. So we're converting from mass to moles of our molecule. OK, so now the question is, how do we do this? Well, we said that we need the molecular weight. All right, so let's go ahead and do the molecular weight. So the molecular weight. If you look at the periodic table, carbon is equal to 12.01. Okay, so carbon, we've got two atoms of carbon, each weigh 12.01. Okay, so we're going to put that in parentheses. And then we've got six hydrogens. So I'll do six times 1.008 are the mass of each of the six. And then last but not least, I've got one oxygen, which is 16. 0, 0. If we add this all up, this would be equal to, let's see, 46.07. Okay, so let's go ahead and give us a little bit more space here. And what this means is we've got 46.07 grams of C2H6O in one mole of C2H6O. All right, so when we do this, we need to make sure that the 46.07 is paired with the grams unit. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this on the bottom. And then the one is just gonna be on the top. So now we've taken care of canceling out grams of our molecule and we're at moles of our molecule. Okay, so now, when we look at what we need to do, we're here, right? So we're at the moles, but now we need to go to moles of our atom, all right? And if we look at our master flow chart, this means we need to use the subscript ratio. And I'll show you how to do this really easily. Okay, so what this means is we need to cancel out moles of our molecule and get to atoms. And we need to just get to moles of carbon. So what this is saying is within one mole of our molecule, you can see that we've got two carbon atoms within it. So I'm just going to go ahead and plug my two in up there. And now we've gotten rid of our moles of our molecule and we've got to moles of carbon. Well, that's good, right? Okay, next up, we need to get rid of moles of carbon. So I'm going to put that on the bottom so that it cancels. So I'll just say moles of C. And then I'll say grams of C. So now we need to come up with a gram to mole ratio. And again, this is pretty easy. Just like over at the beginning, we found the molecular weight by referring to the periodic table. We're going to do the same thing here. So over here, oops, this should be atomic weight. Let me slide over. Sorry, it's tricky with this tablet. 
it's 12.01 on the table. And another way of writing this is that there are 12.01 grams of carbon and every one mole of carbon. Let me slide this over. Okay, so this will be our conversion for the second step. This was our conversion in our first step. And just like before, we need to make sure that our number is paired with the appropriate unit. Okay, so 12.01 needs to be paired with the grams, which means it's going to go on the top. So I've got 12.01 grams of carbon are present if you have one mole of carbon. So now we check. We've got units canceling down here, and we've got our mass of carbon left over. And we can go ahead and come up with an equal sign here. And let's double check our mass here. So I'm going to go ahead and do this in my calculator. So 21.7, type in first, and then I'll multiply that by 1 divided by 46.07. But that 1 divided by 46.07, I'm putting in parentheses. And then I'm multiplying that by 2 over 1 times 12.01. Okay, so if I go ahead, I'm just going to plug in this number over here. I've got 11. 0.313957020 grams of carbon, right? So is this the right answer? Not quite, right? So last but not least, over here, we've got three sig figs. If we look over here, we've got four. If we look over here, we don't do sig figs for whole number ratios, right? This is just an exact ratio. And then over here, we've got four. That means our final answer can only have three sig figs. So I'll go ahead and look at this. The number immediately after those three sig figs is less than five. So we're going to leave those as is. And I'm just going to write 11.31 grams of carbon must be present in the sample. So if we burn ethanol, for example, we could assume that we're going to be releasing this amount of carbon out, right? So it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be ethanol anymore after we burn it. It's going to be primarily in CO2, but we know within that CO2, there's going to be 11.31 grams of carbon. All right, I hope that helps. If you are curious, you can do a similar pathway. So if you wanted to, you could try coming up with the practice problem where maybe we start out with the mass and we're wondering about the number of atoms of carbon. If that's the case, you're going to use Avogadro's number as a conversion. So try to come up with practice problems at home. I know it can feel really overwhelming, but the best way to get better at this is simply to go through the process of repeating these problems over and over and over again. All right, good luck studying.